Whoops, there we go. Okay. Um, hi, my name's Ken Symington. Um, I just want to run a few things past you today. You can throw them in the bin, think about them, whatever. But hear me out anyway. Um, I'd start with asking you a question. Are you curious to know who you really are? Well, obviously you have a body. Uh, your body's got five senses to interact with the world all around you. You can see what's around you, you can hear what's around you, you can smell what's around you. Uh, no jokes there, please. You can touch what's around you. You can taste things that are outside of you. Your body needs water and food and sleep to maintain it. Uh, your body has various complex hormones such as oestrogen in the female body, uh, testosterone in the male body. Our bodies have what's called chromosomes. If you're male, you have XY chromosomes. If you're female, you have XX chromosomes. Uh, your body is enormously, enormously, enormously complex. It is simply a mass of miracles. Your brain and eyes and nervous system, your lungs, your heart, your liver, your spleen, your bowels, muscles, arteries, veins, red and white blood cells, etc, etc. So many complex parts working together in unity to make you you. You see, if you decide to study to be a doctor, you will spend years finding out just how complex each part of your body is. Everything that has life is sculpted by a hidden code called DNA and your DNA is unique as are your eyes and your fingerprints etc. Uh, to understand how DNA works, try this. Next time you're on a web page, pause, right click and go to the words inspect element or source and you will see that behind every page is a very complex code that makes the page the design the designer wanted it to, to be. If the designer changes one line in that background code, it changes then what you see up front. It would be reflected on the web page. Likewise, if someone could right click on you as a person and inspect the source, they would see the most complex code that no human being or computer has any hope of being able to match. The design that makes you you, your height, the colour of your hair and eyes, everything. And if a, if a person could change even one line of, of the DNA in you, it would change the rest of you. So, well, how complex is the DNA in you? Well, it's the most complex molecule in the universe. You have 50 million cells in your body and there's 46 chromosomes in every cell. Yet physically, the total DNA in you would fit into two tablespoonfuls. But if the strands were joined together, they would reach to the moon and back not just once, but 550,000 times. When I say you're incredibly complex, uh, you see what I mean? Your DNA holds more information than all the computer programs ever written by men. If you typed out the code found in you, your DNA, you would fill enough books to fill the Grand Canyon 78 times. And here's the point of this. The code is so complex, so intricate, that the probability of just one of the, your millions of DNA strands arranging itself by chance has been calculated to be one chance in 10 to the power of 119,000. The whole universe is only 10 to the power of 28. Even Richard Dawkins can't discredit the phenomenal complexity of life. He said, the essence of life is statistical improbability on a colossal scale. Yet he won't admit that the incredible complexity and design of all life actually has a designer. Instead, he says it's all just lucky chance. But that's only your body with all its bits and pieces. You also have a soul and that's also you. While your body is sense conscious, your soul is self conscious. It's who you are within your flesh, your unique personality, your mind, your will, your emotions. Your body responds to what your soul is doing. If you decide to stand up, your body stands up. If you decide to walk, your body walks. The emotions in your soul will be reflected in your body. Uh, if you're sad, your body can cry. Sometimes you see a person and despite their outward behavior, you sense that they're fearful or worried or angry or depressed. Uh, you would say, I see you're sad or angry. You would never say, I see your body sad or I see that your eyes are sad. It's a true saying that your eyes are the window of your soul inside. Because in our soul we are self-aware and because we don't really know who we are, we tend to idolise people we would like to be like. Um, we have an urge to stand out and be an individual. Yet we have an equally strong, if not stronger, urge to fit in with the herd mentality. We're prone to be slaves to the latest fashion, lest we are not safely within the current herd. We, we fear rejection. We are prone to accept the latest ideology that dominates the culture, lest we are not standing safely within the herd. And this makes us easy to lead. 
And yet our soul keeps quietly wondering, why am I here? Is there any real purpose to my life? What happens when I die? Will it all have been just one big waste of time with no purpose? But there's more to you than your body and your soul. You're also a spiritual being. You're a spiritual being with a soul within a body. And despite having uh, family and friends, you will find as you get older that so often you can feel so alone as you make your way through life. That's where your spirit comes in. Where your body is sense conscious and your soul is self conscious. Your spirit is designed to be God conscious. Uh, That's how God designed us. But when we're not in a real living and committed relationship with God, our creator, strange things can happen. Things break down. For instance, some people don't identify with humans. Uh, This is known as species dysphoria or trans species. Around 10,000 people in the UK alone enjoy dressing as dogs. Um, According to a Channel 4 documentary, they identify so strongly that they like to dress in doggy suits, be taken for walks and even sleep in a dog cage. Uh, For example, a man called Kaz James, who says he felt his true identity developing in his late teens when he realised he was a puppy. Employed as a store manager in Manchester, he regularly shows his real self by barking at friends, carrying items in his teeth and eating dog biscuits. Uh, When not at work, he wears dog suits, uh, dog masks, has dog leads and a walkie's harness. He has two 400 pound rubber puppy suits and one man made uh, uh, of fur a uh, suit which cost him £2,000. Now, do you really think they are dogs trapped in a human body or somehow they're being deceived into believing that how they feel is real? A 2013 documentary followed the lives of a group of people who believed they were born as their wrong species, ranging from wolves to leopards to raccoons. Some of these people go as far as having complete facial surgery to identify as deeply as possible with the animal they truly believe is the real them. For instance, a man called Dennis Anver transformed himself into Cat Man and liked to be known as Stalking Cat. He had his lips split to resemble the mouth of a cat. He had six stainless steel mounts implanted on his forehead and 18 piercings above his lip to which he could attach whiskers. He had nose and brow implants and and silicone cheek, chin and lip injections. The tips of his ears were pointed and he had so many tattoos they almost covered his body. Sadly, he was found dead in November 2012. Now, do you think he really was a cat trapped in a human body? A 157-year-old man has had 110 tattoos, 50 piercings, a split tongue, eyeballs coloured and both ears removed so that he can finally be truly content as a parrot, calling himself Parrot Man. He's currently planning to have his nose reshaped into a beak. Now, do you think he really uh, is a parrot trapped in a human body? One woman identifies as a horse. One man identifies as a goat in the Alps. And now, do you think they really are a horse and a goat trapped in a human body? Then other kin can also, other kins, a term can be used by people who feel they're actually mythical animals trapped inside, such as elves or dragons. For instance, Richard Hernandez from Arizona first transgendered into identifying as a female called Eva Tiamat Baphomé Medusa and then into a dragon. On her website, Tiama explains, I am the dragon lady, a male to female transgender in the process of morphing into a human dragon, becoming a reptoid as I shed my human skin and my physical appearance and my whole life as a whole, leaving my humanness behind. Um, Transform surgery has so far included nose modification, tooth extraction, eye colouring, forked tongue, full face tattoo, horns implanted onto her forehead, Uh, tattoos and scarcification on her face and chest that resembles reptilian scales. Double ear removals and eye stain green giving her what she calls Medusa green eyes of death. You see despite how despite how strongly these people feel do you really think they are elves or dragons trapped in a human body? You see despite the reality of their feelings telling them that how they feel is how they are I suspect your common sense would tell you that they all have a form of dysphoria. And here's the point. Until 2012, a transgender person was medically termed as having gender identity disorder until the relentless LGBTQ pressure ensured it was changed 
to gender dysphoria are no longer regarded as a psychological disorder. The reason I tell you these facts is that it's wise not to be drawn into the whirlwind of the current ideology, but just to take time to reflect, to consider if how you might feel is actually how it is. See, once you go down the hormone and surgery route, it's not like dyeing your hair a different colour. It's darn hard to go back from that. The media rarely tell you of the people who underwent hormone and surgery programmes and later deeply, deeply regretted it. Uh, that information's out there. If you go looking for it, that's all I'm saying. Don't rush in. Your body, your soul and your spirit are far too precious a gift to play God with. Uh, you may have heard the, the Bible term born again. Let me tell you what that means. It means that whatever you do, wherever you go, you're always quietly aware there's just something missing in your life. That is your spirit within you, longing to be at one with your Creator, God the Father. Uh, you see, I was a churchgoer on and off until the age of 41. I was religious, I believed in God, I believed Jesus died on the cross, and I believed he rose uh, again. But that didn't change anything in me. Until on August the 11th, 1989, when I decided to turn away from what I knew to be displeasing to God and surrendered my whole life to Jesus, uh, to be my boss, my Lord, and the miracle happened. My spirit that I was utterly unaware of I became alive unto God, uh, born again, and I felt as if I knew myself for the very first time. Suddenly I felt whole. And as years have gone by, that feeling of wholeness has worked its way bit by bit into my soul and my body. As the years have gone by, I've grown to love Jesus uh, to love God the Father, to love the Holy Spirit more than anything. I didn't know I was not whole until I became whole. I, I also knew the verse, for God so loved the world, but I couldn't imagine that he loved me. Uh, how wrong I was. You and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, we are made in the image of God, who is one and yet three, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. His love for you is so deep, so painfully deep, that he did the unthinkable in order to make a way for you to be able to have a beautiful father-son or father-daughter relationship with him. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to take all your sin and grief and sorrow upon himself and to pay the price for all your sin that justice demands. You see, when you acknowledge this and genuinely surrender your life to Jesus, heaven will rejoice and God's spirit will awaken and connect with your spirit and you will know what it means to be born again. So why do I tell you all this? Well, Jesus referred to the devil as the father of lies and the ruler of this world and the deceiver of the whole world. The Apostle Paul referred to him as the God of this world, that's with a small g, um, and as the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Uh, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient and the apostle john said that the whole world lies under the influence of the evil one uh, as i watch what the deceiver of the world is telling you i fear for where it will lead you i see mental issues growing at a frightening rate i, I see gender confusion just released uh, in the uk there's been four thousand four hundred percent increase in just girls being referred for trans transition in 10 years I see increasing family breakdown. I see foul language and gross immorality being the staple diet given to us on TV and cinema. I see increasing street violence. I see the emptiness within people driving them to escape into drugs and sex and alcohol and even into identity tattoos. Look, Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But he says, I've come that you might have life and have life abundantly. So please, just think about what I've said. We have the gift of free will. But there's always consequences with our choices. Making the right choices is just so important. Anyway, look, I hope this is of some use to you. Anyway, God bless. Bye.